Hello, my friends. And throughout the entire day yesterday, the Russians managed to carry out 105 assaults. So this means the activity along the front line is increasing again. And today the commander-in-chief of the Swedish Armed Forces said the fighting in Ukraine has reached a stalemate. So we are closely monitoring the situation and discussing the state of affairs with our Ukrainian colleagues, particularly at NATO meetings. The fighting continues in the same areas and along the same front line. It's horrifying to see how many people have died and cities lie in ruins, he said. But then uh, noted that at the beginning of the offensive, Russian troops didn't capture much territory. There are only minor advances and the front line shifts back and forth. Fourth, overall, the situation is very difficult. The war has been at a standstill for several months now, and there are no signs of change at the moment, he emphasized. And unfortunately, indeed, the armed forces of Ukraine cannot yet liberate the territory, and the Russians also cannot advance quickly. However, by uh, destroying the territory, they are gradually moving forward. And this is confirmed by weekly reports. So what lies ahead is still completely unclear. But let's look at today's situation on the front. So we'll start with the Kharkiv direction. And here the occupiers continue their attempts to break through to the settlement of Lipce. But I want to note, they um, haven't made any advances for several days. So the armed forces of Ukraine have taken up defense and are not allowing the occupiers to advance further. In the Vovchansk area, so offensive actions have also ceased and regrouping is underway due to heavy losses. However, the Russians continue to destroy Vovchansk and there are reports of shelling in the settlement of Vilcha, which is located just beyond Vovchansk. So, and as we already know, the Russians' immediate plans in this direction are to advance towards Billy Kolodis, and it's uh, 13 kilometers from the current front line. In the Kupinsk direction, uh, so the situation remains practically unchanged, so the fighting continues only for Sinkivka, and there is no activity along the rest of the front line, so the front line remains unchanged. In the Svatove area, so attacks on Berestove haven't ceased. And today the occupiers decided to expand the previously captured bridgehead. And they are advancing on... So, uh, let me find it. On Hrekivka and Druzhelubivka areas. But um, the fighting is still ongoing, so it's too early to discuss the results. In the Krimina uh, direction, so the number of shelling has increased and attacks on Torske and Nevske continue. So, but the front line remains unchanged. Uh, but meanwhile, forest fires have started again near Liman. So, in the Siversk direction, the general staff uh, reports that attacks on Bilohorivka, which the Russians allegedly captured, so attacks are on Vyimka are also ongoing, and Siversk is under shelling, but there are no changes along the front line. In the Chasivyar direction, so activity is quite high. So here the occupiers continue to shell and advance on Ivanivske. Uh, while uh, the situation in Klishivka remains uncertain because various sources provide different information, but the general staff doesn't confirm the capture of the village at the time of creating this video. And additionally, uh, as shown on the map, the Russians are essentially approaching the outskirts of Chasivyar. So it's also important to note that um, the occupiers have increased the number of Shalin in the uh, Toretsk area, but no offensive actions have been conducted there yet. In the Pokrovsk direction, so the situation remains tense and in the past day alone there have been at least 27 attacks and numerous airstrikes. 
but the armed forces of Ukraine are managing to shoot down Russian aircraft, and just yesterday another Su-25 was down. So uh, the general staff uh, reports that the hottest spot is Novo Alexandrivka, as the Russians continue to struggle to break through to the highway and are deploying more reserves to breach their defense, making their situation extremely difficult. Uh, additionally, fighting continues in the area of Yevhenivka, Sokil, Novoselivka Persia, and also Yasnobrodivka, and sporadic attacks are conducted near Netailove. So, overall, Assaults are recorded along nearly the entire front line, and some attempts are made during the day, others at night. Uh, however, the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to stabilize the situation here with no changes reported. And we are now waiting to see how events will unfold. So the Russians had planned that part of the Ukrainian armed forces troops and equipment in this direction would be sent to the Kharkiv direction, leading to a collapse in the defense here. But, as it turns out, this is, didn't happen and, on the contrary, the situation has stabilized. Uh, however, I think it's still too early to draw conclusions, so the Russians may be accumulating forces today for a new powerful wave of attacks. Uh, furthermore, so it was revealed uh, that the defensive lines uh, were either absent or in poor condition, prompting the Verkhovna Rada to vote for the creation of a temporary special commission on the arrangement of fortifications and the procurement of drones. So uh, the power of the TSC includes studying the circumstances and preparing issues regarding the needs of the security and defense sector for unmanned aerial vehicles and forming a state order for the production and procurement of drones, analyzing the practice of distribution, transfer, supply and registration of drones by military units and subdivision of the armed forces of Ukraine and other military formations created in accordance with the laws of Ukraine, arranging fortifications, engineering barriers on the line of contact, and the targeted use of funds allocated for their arrangement. So, good news. Uh, in the Kurahova direction. So, battles are ongoing in the area of Georgievka. However, Russian successes in Krasnohorivka have come to an end, and all their attacks there are not yielding results. And there are also no changes along the front line in the areas of the villages of Kostantinivka and Paraskovivka. So, despite a large number of assaults recorded. And from the current front line to the main target, which today is Kurahova, uh, it remains 10 kilometers and effectively. Russian advancement here has been halted. So the armed forces of Ukraine are also struck in the area of uh, Mospine. So here. Uh, so uh, at around 2 p.m., using Atacams, an air defense complex near the village of Mospina, the Donetsk region, was hit. Judging by the launch trajectory, it was an uh, S-300 or S-400. Such strikes are practically unnoticed publicly. Atacams is in operation almost every day. This is encouraging. So... In the Vuhledar direction. So the battles for Staromayorsky continue, but as before, the Russians have no success. And it's also reported that um, the Ukrainian armed forces struck Berdansk, but there are no details. Uh, in the Zaporizhia direction. So there is a lull with no attacks or shelling reported. And in the Kherson direction. Uh, so the Ukrainian armed forces um, struck. Uh, hill, um, <laughs> let me <laughs> find it. Uh, so struck Hladkivka, where a significant fire uh, was recorded. So meanwhile, the Russians continue to shell the right bank, and at the time of creating this video, no new attacks on the village of Krinke have been recorded. So, and that's all for me. So, 
As usual, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and of course hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.